If you're wondering how to transit the Panama Canal with a sailboat, we've created this video series with you in mind. I'm Cheryl Shard. My husband Paul and I are currently home in Canada editing new episodes of Distant Shores until borders reopen in Panama and we can get back on board. We made an Atlantic to Pacific transit in March of this year, just before the COVID lockdown. So social distancing is not being practiced in the video you're about to see. This video is part three of three in a series on how to transit the Panama Canal with a sailboat. In part one, we showed you the best place to prepare for an Atlantic to Pacific transit and what's involved in an ad measurer's inspection. Discuss the costs of doing a transit, including using an agent and how to find one, but also gave resources if you want to save some money and do the paperwork yourself. In part two, we introduced you to the Panama Canal, went over line handling practice and techniques, showed you how to work with a canal advisor, the procedure for rafting to other yachts, then took you on the first leg of the canal transit from Cologne on the Atlantic coast, up the Gatun locks to moor for the night on Lake Gatun. You can find the links to part one and two here and also in the description below. And this week in part three, we take you on the final leg of the transit across Gatun Lake, through the Culebra Cut and down the Pedro Miguel and Miraflores locks to enter the Pacific Ocean. Let's go to Panama. We've got an early morning start today. It's supposed to be an eight o'clock arrival for the pilot, but uh, we're not really sure what's happening because there's four boats here now with the three of us that came through, plus this catamaran that has been waiting. So I'm not sure if that means that we'll get two boat rafts of two or somebody's gonna get left behind or, or just what's happening. But it's a gorgeous spot to sit here and keep an eye out for crocodiles, apparently. So these guys are getting a pilot anyway. Good morning, ¿Qué tal? For the second day, we have a different pilot and we welcome him on board. It's a bit scary watching the pilot boat come up so close. In rough waters and with big ships, transferring pilots can be quite dangerous. But today, in the calm conditions, it's easy. Welcome aboard. My name is Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah, I'm David. David. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, now we have three Davids. Okay. Buena <laughs> salida. So <laughs> Okay, so we can start disconnecting the lines and yeah, get in yeah. the port. Take the bow and bow and stern. Beautiful, we're disconnected. Uh -huh. We are off. So it's uh, around 30 miles. Oh, just 30, okay. So we do it in about four and a bit hours. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. takes us nearly 20 miles across Gatun Lake today. Gatun Lake was formed when the Chagres River was dammed back in 1913 with the construction of the Panama Canal. Since we ascended the three locks from the Caribbean Sea, we are now more than 80 feet above the old Chagres Riverbed. This channel mark would have been high up in the trees of the Panamanian rainforest. For this trip, we are paying Panama Canal fees of 1,600 US dollars, plus the fees we paid to our agents for extras such as line and fender rentals. But this seems like a bargain compared to the larger of these passing ships, who are paying over $1 million to go through the canal. This passenger ship pays around 25,000.
So we're keeping an eye on the ships. We have ships going past. We also have our ship friend here, the Kinaros, and that is the ship that's been already assigned that it's going to be going through the locks with us. And that will be in a few hours still, but we're watching her on AIS as she's exiting the, uh, the lock and she'll be coming up passing us. And then we have to go in first with our raft of, of boats. So we already know which is the ship and that, that's pretty cool. So we can track it on AIS, so that's her there. Yeah, so we're traveling through Lake Gatun now, and that's the, all the trees and everything that we're passing and all these little tiny islands were actually just what would have been the top of the hills that were down in this, these valleys. And then when they made the canal, they created the lake and flooded the valley. So we're going over top of trees and the old bed of the Chagres River here. Once we get across Gatun Lake, we arrive at the Culebra Cut. This was undoubtedly the biggest challenge to digging the Panama Canal, cutting through the mountainous ridge of the Continental Divide. The sides of the excavation kept sliding down, meaning that much more material had to be removed than originally thought. Roughly 100 million cubic meters was excavated with steam shovel and removed by rail, and then by floating dredgers. Going through the cut here, and you can see for these big uh, Neo Panamax, the really large ships, that this all had to be uh, made larger to handle them. And you can see how it would have worked. Like in the cut, you really realize why the French were never going to succeed in making this canal when they had to dig the whole thing, because we're 85 feet up above the ocean level. So if this had been made the French design, it would have had to dredge down 85 extra more feet down than here for this whole length of this cut so it's the real reason this was hard enough as it was and uh, to make the canal using a sea level lock system would have been just it would have saved water but it would have been completely impossible to build so the history of this is just so cool Well, it's a big thing to make sure we want to look after everyone for the day here, including the canal advisor. And today we have super sandwiches. We're just eating really well. The Culebra Cut is just eight miles long and takes us a little over an hour. Then we'll enter the first of three locks, which will lower us down to the Pacific Ocean. It seems a great privilege to be able to use the amazing Panama Canal, a marvel of engineering over 100 years old. Like the three locks that brought us up from the Atlantic, there are three more here to drop us back down to sea level at the Pacific. But here the locks are separate. First we enter the Pedro Miguel lock to drop down to this small lake, then the two Miraflores locks together to get to the Pacific. Today we're rafting up with just one other boat to go through the locks. Yeah. So first they will pass the, the, the forward on up yep. and then they will we will pass the springs, okay? All right, Captain, that's good. 
There you go. Tying the boat snugly with four lines like this means we form a single unit for maneuvering in the locks. Slack a little bit on forward. So who's going to be in forward? You? Okay. So when you when they throw you the line, the small fist, you make it fast. On the bow line, and then you just grab it. As we approach the first lock, a shoreman throws us a weighted line called a monkey's fist with a small lump of lead in a rope weaving. We put this through the loop in our dock line and secure his line to ours with a bowline knot, which is strong but easy for him to undo later. There are four lines ashore, one from each corner of our raft, and the shoremen walk along beside us, trying to keep the light line up out of the water until we get to our spot in the front of the lock. Then our buddy ship comes in behind us. Not all ships fill the whole length of the lock chamber, so yachts can be put in the spare space. I hope they do the math and we all fit in here, eh? <laughs> here comes the little mule. Water is starting to go down, okay? Yeah. okay. Before, both ships can go down at the same speed. Wow. But now, because we are in water conservation, they transfer from one side to the other. Okay, oh. so they just so that's why they are they're doing. So we're transferring water to that one to raise this level. Yeah, smart. I never. I love that technology. <laughs> Every time a lock chamber is emptied, it uses 26 million gallons of water. Meanwhile, our lock needs another 26 million gallons to fill in preparation for us. But because the locks are beside each other, the lock keeper can divert the first half of the water across to fill our lock and then just dump the lower half. Then it will only take 13 million gallons to fill our lock. Mainly, I will be driving the raft and our neighbor just keeps the rudder centered and his engine in neutral. But if needed, we can ask him to use his engine for extra directional corrections. At the top of the Miraflores locks, we have to wait while water is again diverted to fill our lock. We put our engine in reverse to slow us down and ask our buddy boat to put his engine in forward gear to help maneuver the raft and keep us off the wall while we wait for the lock to be ready. Perfecto. We're moving a thousand feet into the front of the first Miraflores lock chamber, and the shoremen keep hold of the messenger lines, so it's important not to go too fast for them. It's breezy this afternoon, and there's a lot of force with both boats hanging on the stern lines. But it's vital not to tie the line off on the cleat. As the boat descends, it must be eased out to allow for the 27 feet we go down. Welcome to the Pacific, huh? Exciting. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. It's a lot of work to get here. Yeah. This gate opens onto the Pacific Ocean as we're back at sea level again. I'm excited. We're here. Woohoo! We did it all the way across. <laughs> good job. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. You've been a great advisor. Awesome. We've so had such a great day with you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys. Very nice. Good, good job. Pleasure. Welcome to the Pacific Ocean, honey. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. We've been dreaming and planning this for so long, and now. The gates are opening and we are on the Pacific side of Panama. Yeah, there are webcams along the Panama Canal and now that we're at this main lock entering the Pacific, 
our friends and family at home are texting us to say that they're watching us go through to begin our new adventure. Join us next time as we enter the Pacific, explore Panama City, and show you the highlights of Panama Ashore. If you enjoyed this, please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And finally, a big thank you to members of our Distant Shores Cruising Club on Patreon for your support making this video.